This is the all-new Nissan X-Trail in e-power mode and in e-force mode, which is the top-of-the-range X-Trail that you can get here in Ireland. Now, the X-Trail has become more premium, there's no doubt, but so has the price, which is very premium. Entry level starts from mid 40,000 euro, and if you do want a seven seater, you're gonna to have to cough up into mid 50s, which is quite a jump for two extra seats in the back of the X Trail. But if you want grip, if you want reliability, and you want something that is a very familiar product on Irish roads, then the X Trail could be for you. Something that I think is strange, or obviously on purpose, at this top of the range X Trail is that the grill has no chrome going on. There's a little bit around the sides, but the main grill is kind of the same color as, well, in this case, the black. So that doesn't stand out as much, but again, maybe that is the intention. Coming around the side of the X-Trail, we have roof rails, which will give you extra space, uh, as if the back and the interior wasn't spacious enough. The car is sitting on 19 inch diamond cut SUV specific tires, which do offer a very good level of ride comfort. Even on the 19s, I have to say, it's a very smooth car to be behind a wheel of. That's a combination of e-power at work and the profile that's on those tires. We've got an e-power badge on the side of the car, more chrome along the side of it as well. Uh, again, top of the range has keyless entry, blind spot, not a massive boot spoiler, but the X-Trail does have a nice lip over the back, which adds to its kind of sporty, rugged look that you're getting in this SUV from Nissan. I like the way the back of the car is broken up with a kind of uh, chrome and a bit of brushed uh, silver down the bottom of the vehicle. It contrasts nice with the black color. 575 litres in the back and 485 if you go for the seven seater. So the e-power version is down on space. Also what's down is towing capacity. So 670 kilos braked is what you can tow on the X-Trail e-power version. You can tow up to two ton if you're going for the other engine variants that you can't get here in Ireland. Some good features though, because you can take that flexible parcel shelf in the back, you can store that away, you can drop your extra set of seats, obviously very comfortably down, and that gives you tons of space then if you need to just use the car as an everyday car, when you're not constantly using those two rear seats at the back. It does get noticeably smaller if you do need to use them. It's a really, really small boot, but uh, it's comparable with something like the Skoda Kodiak, and the Toyota RAV4, those kind of vehicles, and you can check out reviews for those cars by hitting the links here or at the end of the video, because the RAV4 PHEV especially is something that you could really compare to the X-Trail e-power. Also, you don't get a spare tire in this car, spare wheel. You'll have to rely on gunk and foam at the side of the road, sorry. And yes, you wouldn't expect any less, but this top of the range version comes with an electronic tailgate just to make life easier. Oh, and before I forget, there's a journalist in the UK called Howard Ritchie. You should check out his videos. He describes this as the river dance boot, where you sweep your foot under the floor of the car, and the idea is the boot <laughs> will open. And I got this to work on the x trail review that I did in Slovenia, but for some reason, river dance doesn't want to work today. I have the key on me, so I'm not sure what that's about. It's a good name, though. Now, it's fair to say that e-power is a fairly new product here in Nissan's world, so the idea is that the petrol engine never actually drives the wheels of the car, or in this case, the four wheels of the X-Trail. So the battery charges from the petrol engine and that then drives the wheels. So there's no gearbox in the car and it's a very, very smooth drive, akin to driving an EV without obviously the range anxiety because you have a full tank of petrol. This model is longer and taller and wider and all the usual things that you'd expect uh, a fourth generation of a car to be. So we have uh, blinds that are here, you can unclip them. They're not as slickly put together, you can hear that snap off them uh, as the Skoda Kodiak for example, but they'll do the job once they're down. Uh, the door bins have good space for bottles and all that kind of stuff. Knee room and leg room is fantastic, really really vast. Rear passengers in the X-Trail will also be happy because they're well catered for. You'll see it high up enough over this side of the door and then on this version you can pull a little lever here and open down your armrest and also use that as a hatch of sorts if you don't need that middle person to be sitting anywhere. 
Now, the other thing that's interesting is the rear is obviously a little bit tight for legroom. So if you do have someone in the back and needs a bit more space, you can adjust this bench in a kind of 70-30 capacity. So you can move these two seats or you can obviously move that uh, other seat across the way from me. So you can have a couple of flexibility options in terms of legroom. Uh, this version has the glass panoramic roof. It's lovely, floods in the light, but still has a very generous amount of headroom over here as well. And they'll be comfortable because you can charge with USB-A and USB-C. There's climate control individually controlled by rear passengers. But again, that's only if you go for the top of the range X-Trail, which not everybody is gonna be able to afford to do. Something else that the X-Rail borrows from its baby Qashqai sister is the fact that these doors open at a really wide angle. I think it's 85 degrees, making getting pets and kids and boxes and anything else into the X-Rail quite a bit easier. Don't forget here on Nobby on Cars, we are a fully independent YouTube channel. If you want to support with just five euro and a tip, or anything you want to contribute, you can hit up the link, which is buymeacoffee.com forward slash Nobby on Cars, and it really does help. You'd be surprised how much time and editing takes to review cars. So the inside of the X-Trail, again, is probably not what you will expect. Now, entry level will not get the little fine grain wood trims and things like that. This again is the highest spec X-Trail you can get, but it is very well kitted out. And in that sense, if you were in a more premium vehicle that was getting on a bit and you might be saying to yourself, oh, will it be the same? I think if you go for a really high spec X-Trail, you'll feel very, very comfortable indeed. There's a bit of a chime out of the uh, car, just to warn you, because it's very, very quiet on the move. There is not a huge amount of difficulty controlling things in the car because there is a touch screen but there's loads of physical buttons for your climate control. Big volume knob is still there. You have different modes. You can have snow and off-road and hill descent control for any sort of big inclines and I have taken an X-Trail off-road in Slovenia. If you want to have a look at that video you can have a look up here but uh, the idea is that you can actually take this thing off-road and especially in E4 mode in four-wheel drive you'll have plenty of grip there's an EV button which will ensure that you pull away in total EV smoothness as long as there's enough battery charge and you're not accelerating beyond a specific limit but really even at motorway speeds the petrol engine is not often on it will charge the battery uh, and then will shut up again and uh, another reminder that you know you don't ever have the petrol uh, engine driving the actual wheels directly. You've got an e-pedal mode on this car which will put up an, enough regen braking to bring the car to a halt. Uh, the Nissan steering wheel is nice. Again, if you go for the top of the range, you're gonna get a head-up display. Lovely leather finish on this. Um, there is extra storage down here for more bits. Decent space under your armrest, some good cup holders, and it's all well thought out inside the X Trail. A little bit of customization going on, but not a huge amount. But CarPlay wirelessly works well. I've had no issues with that. The sat nav is uh, of reasonable um, quality in terms of the graphics and stuff like that, and it's a nice widescreen, pretty easy to use, and no major complaints. Same with the seats found them very very comfortable nice leather finish on them and if they do get a bit mucky in this cream color uh, I have had to use a couple of wipes on them kids and uh, it's worked out just fine there is auto park in this vehicle if you're someone who doesn't like trying to park the car yourself you've got wireless charging down here as well as USB-C and USB-A options also up front just to give you some facts on the engine it's 201 brake horsepower and don't let that kind of amount put you off because it's still more than enough actually because that battery ensures there's always that instant level of torque where that's overtaking it is actually brisk enough and I think 200 brake horsepower in a car that might carry up to seven people probably would keep you know most people at bay anyway um, there's great levels of grip just because of that e-force technology that uh, puts plenty of uh, control to each wheel and can deliver power where it's needed and less power where it's not needed and I have to say you know as as a four-wheel drive vehicle goes uh, it doesn't really miss a beat it also doesn't have a huge amount of body roll despite the size of the car and the stance of the height of it so I think they've done a pretty good job at uh, making a fairly solid um, kind of composed vehicle in corners no one's going to feel seasick uh, traveling the x-trail put it that way 
I've obviously driven this engine in the Qashqai, so I've had now two weeks with ePower, and I really like it. Fuel economy is about 7.7 .7 litres per 100 kilometres. A lot of people have commented on the Qashqai video saying they expected it to be a little bit better. So as you've got to remember, this is a permanent all-wheel drive vehicle, so generally you'd kind of be seeing 10 and 11s in a lot of vehicles. Now it did reset the computer when I picked up the car, and even at motorway cruising speeds, it was doing four and a half liters per 100 kilometers. So I've no doubt you will get that down on longer driving situations, but for my mix of fairly urban driving, you know, school runs, all those kind of things, um, I am achieving sort of the mid sevens per 100 kilometers. Miles per gallon figures down here for those of you watching in the UK and beyond. But while I've no doubt that a lot of people could be lamenting about the diesel X trail of a bygone era, uh, I think fair enough because there's still plenty of torque in this car and you'll still feel like it's got enough. Now it's the same on Qashqai, Nissan have really upped the game in terms of standard safety equipment. So on this version you get a great reversing camera with a kind of a 360 uh, view on it but all x trails will get things like blind spot frontal collision avoidance uh, rear cross traffic monitoring going on all in all it makes it a very very safety assisted car and uh, it is quite long so it's nice to have front sensors and the camera on the back certainly it could benefit from a camera on the front as well while there's heated seats on this model it's strange at the price point that there isn't a heated steering wheel it's only a small thing but you'd kind of think a lot of the other cars will have that and nissan's pro pilot system which is radar guided is very very good uh, i do like how it will kind of get on with things as soon as you change lane there's no big lag for it wondering is there a car in front is there not a car in front so safety assist in terms of radar uh, of interest. is very Please good say a PA or category name. cancel government office please say or select an item number from the displayed list cancel canceling voice recognition thank you Believe it or not, that has not come on once in my time with the extra this week. It's like as if it knows we're doing a review now, so I'm going to come on. Uh, but if you do want to find nav and make the cabin warmer, cooler, you can use the voice controls to do just that. So all in all, I think ePower and the X-Trail are a good match. There is still that, perhaps... Uh, consumption that people would have expected to be a little bit lower uh, and as I say mid 7 litres per 100 kilometres seems to be what I'm getting from my week in the X-Trail. Don't forget once again your support is really really appreciated thank you to so many of you who have tipped us with a coffee on buymeacoffee.com forward slash knobby on cars if you'd like to tip us for a coffee or even five coffees we don't mind and it really does help. The fourth generation of the Nissan X-Trail really has grown into its own. It is fair to say it is very much a premium vehicle. When you think about the first generation X-Trail and what this can really put it up to today, I would happily sit it almost in the same bracket as a Lexus, but certainly the Kia Sorento, the RAV4 PHEV, all cars that you might be shortlisting comparing to this, the X-Trail will put it up to absolutely any of them. The thing is, it's not cheap anymore. Starting from mid 40s, that's kind of acceptable, but when you want the seven seater with a bit of spec on it, you really are closer to 60 and beyond. And the question for you today is, do you want to spend that much money on your next car? If that cost isn't a prohibitive factor for you, however, you need to have a look at this because the X-Trail is probably a lot more premium than you might think. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.